Most of you know this man as the voice of Roger Rabbit, but he's a very, very funny stand-up that we invite here as often as he's available to come. Please welcome Charles Fleischer. Chromium bathtub. <laughs> That's the name of that tune. Oh, okay. Chromium tub. <laughs> right on. He won't lie to me. <laughs> you know, I'll, first of all, let me apologize. I always introduce you and say the voice of Roger Rabbit, and people probably think that's the only thing you ever did. You know, I, I should. Well, you yeah. have no credits. No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I do. You just did a Dolly Parton movie. Yeah, Straight Talk could be out in the spring. She's an amazing woman, but it's okay. I don't mind that. You know, the, when they introduced Galileo, they say, you know, the guy who invented the telescope. You know, he had his own <laughs> theories, but they didn't care. <laughs> you know, here's Columbus, the guy discovered America. Oh God, again? We had to hear that? Come on. <laughs> I wrote a book, I, I did a cooking book, I had a how to build ships. Did they mention that? No, discovered America. Ben Franklin, the guy with the kite. Come on! <laughs> Bifocals, I invented the harmonica. So, you know, it's the parameters of the show. I thought Stevie Wonder invented the harmonica. Well, he didn't really invent it. He invented the sunglasses to play the harmonica. Oh, okay. okay. Which makes it look much cooler. Yes, but right. Ben Franklin did. He, ben Franklin and Stevie Wonder. I'm thinking series. Ben Franklin built a time machine, takes Stevie Wonder back and they're holding the key and like, ooh, the keys and the lines. <laughs> it could happen. Oh, God. It could happen. Yes. Now, I saw your show last night. Uh -huh. And David Copperfield. He was good. Spent on um, brilliant. Illusion. Mm -hmm. and I think it was real. It's two point two million dollars on a bunch of magic tricks. Oh, his collection he bought. Yeah. Too much pocket change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm happy for him, and I don't want to outdo him. But today, the Snuffy Wertheimer comedy and joke collection, I acquired it. Eight point nine million dollars. Eat your heart out, Mr. Copperfield. <laughs> the original whoopee cushion, the Pharaoh's slippery hat. Unbelievable. First dirty cave paintings. This is an extensive collection, Rossinio. <laughs> He wrote this just for me. Just, just, no. <laughs> That's very funny. Thank you very much. I appreciate your consult nature. <laughs> you know, when I, I'm listening to you, and you love words, and we always talk about this. I was reading in the paper that kids are reading less. Not, not only kids, America is reading less. There won't be a Charles Fleischer of tomorrow. No way, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? I read TV Guide every week. <laughs> dude. It's a little scary, but it's part of the situation. You know, the omni ego impression area, retro, is happening. <laughs> yes. But children need to, uh, to read. You know, TV's great, but we gotta read. We gotta go for words, because words are the key. Yeah. Like, do you look through the dictionary every day and learn new words? How do, how do you expand your vocabulary? Reading. You know, you read a book, and then the guy uses the word, you know, numbo-healy. You know, what's that mean? You're just gonna look it up, but if it's really good, like, the beautiful woman came closer to him and opened her Nambolini and said, I gotta look that one up. <laughs> but, you know, like, Professor Laddington moved the Koshma closer to the Flukman. Who cares? <laughs> but Genevieve fixed her fluted muti. I'm gonna look that one up. <laughs> oh, man, then you learn new words, and it, you know, it creates a growth in the brain and the socioeconomic reality of our secret hearts. I came out that time, I said, that one. You make up words, don't you? Sometimes you use a word, it don't mean nothing, does it? Well, but all words are made up. Don't you see? That's the essence of this whole speech thing. Everybody makes up some words. So you can make up words based on real words. Like, uh, uh, to predict the future is mancy. That's the, the suffix used. Like, geomancy is using the earth to predict the future. Mm -hmm. uh, necromancy, talking to dead people. I've invented a new method of divination by using expensive men's trousers. It's called Fancy Pants Mency. <laughs> ah, there's gonna be a rain, maybe a little highway or something wrong. By the way, last night, you did a, an old Catskill guy. Well, <laughs> it was, but I just wanna give you one thing. He was doing like an old Jew guy. He was beautiful, except the cigar hand had like this. Uh -huh. But now, this, it, where's he holding the cigar? You ah, keep it open. Ah, see, that kept me out of the big time. That was it, man. <laughs> but you could, we could do like a little thing where you could be like an old Catskill guy, and I can be your old chauffeur, you know, driving <laughs> Mr. Moshe. <laughs> Let me drive you to the temple, Mr. Moshe. <laughs> Please, sir, you don't need to walk to the temple. Hey, hold your cigar like this. Yeah, this is like, this look like some kind of Turkish chef or something. 
Have some tabbouleh, Mr. Moshe. Wait, we need to take a commercial. A commercial? We take a commercial. We'll come right back. Go. Go. <laughs> Any other words that you've created that we should know about? Well, you can make up words for anything. For instance, let's say uh, you're in a bar and you see a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Or a man sees a woman, a woman sees a man, or whatever you see that you like, that you want. Yes. That <laughs> would be a Yalman Doidel. Why? Man, I don't know. I'm just making it up. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you know, why anything? Why is this a couch? Why isn't it just a Stuchen? But the thing is, if you look back, you can find out why things are like pantal pants comes from uh, pantaloni and from the Punch and Judy. I mean, it's all traceable back to something. Mm -hmm. So by learning this, we learn about ourselves. And that's what's wrong with the world today. People don't know about themselves in the ancient way. That's what I'm here to say. Forget <laughs> jokes and comedy. We must unite to purify. We must dignify to realize. We must be truthful to the ancient things which have lost and fallen away. Yes. If you can't get laughs, inspire them. <laughs> Who is Charlie? Which one? This one. Who am I? Yeah. I am the thinker of things. I am the ancient futurist who speaks in riddles to confuse those who wish to know me. <laughs> okay. And you speak to me as Arsenio, and yet there are so many yous as there are me's. We are different to individuals that are different. You're a different Arsenio to a policeman. You're a different Arsenio to a policewoman. We all are different components, but we can pull them together. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> you never know. Sometimes boom, sometimes hook <laughs> mushnutna. Uh, Robert Yurick was talking about traveling. Do you notice differences in language when you travel? Oh, uh, yeah, different attitudes. I was just in England. You know what? It's amazing in England. You go to, like, New York, one of those little sex shops, or just the bookshops that sell everything, you know? Hey, get your hands off the book. Don't touch nothing. Get out of here. In England, what's in here? You want gay? You want straight? You want hetero? You want bondage? We got beekeepers with hats, zookeepers. We got gay circus people. We got trainers. We got penguin trainers, hetero bondage penguin trainers with micro midgets wearing hats, geese fat. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Hemingway. We got a Hemingway, we got the Hoing way, we got geese with Hemingway. Hey, no, no. <laughs> it's definitely a different attitude. <laughs> Sexually, it's a different attitude. Really? Well, yeah, I think, you know how you can tell? The money. You look at the money, the money is all colored and beautiful. Well, you know my sex is pleasurable? Because of Meisner's corpuscles. They're on the palms of the hands, the lips, the sensitive, sensitive area, and the bottom of the feet. It'd be weird, though, if someone had all these Meisner's corpuscles just on the bottom of their feet. You know what? Oh. <sighs> you want to ride? No, no. no. <laughs> now I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. Oh, guys. I always see you pull this thing. It's like it could be a little exercise thing. And to... uh oh. Okay, I ripped it. Oh, we'll fix it. I'm sorry. Actually, could I do something that would be slightly destructive? Oh, enjoy yourself. Seriously? It just seems. Yes, okay. <laughs> he wants to see what's under there. Okay. Twenty dollars. <laughs> I'll pay for the stitching, too. I just had a feeling. Find money on the show. It was part of a dream I had. When you're on the set, rip up the cushions. There'll be money there. <laughs> but it's English money. Oh, God. That's, that's going to be so expensive. I was hoping the laugh would be bigger. You know, just <laughs> You and me. <laughs> well, I just it's tore my damn couch, We man. can rip it off. But no, it's... that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Yeah, wait a minute, I'll put I, it back. No, it's fine. Keep it. No, I'll put it back. You did find something, didn't you? I'll put it back. Okay. Ah. Anyway. But... <laughs> More 
it's everywhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, let, me, let me ask you a question. Remember the time I saw you in the Sorry, flower shop? No, it's, it's fine, man. I feel man. bad, man. The show is doing good. We'll fix this tonight. You guilted me. <laughs> you guilted me, man. Don't worry about See, it. See, it's coming back. You're a quick learner. <laughs> um, the flower shop. We were at the flower shop. You were walking by. Major I was at the flower shop. I was buying my woman flowers because I was in the doghouse. And uh, we got into a conversation about women. And, and you were talking, like I said, you know, we were talking about sexual problems and women and this and that. And you said, you never have sexual problems. Because you said, you have it all together. You know the secrets and you well, would tell you me one When you say problems, day. what do you mean? Like, sometimes the problem is not getting it when you want it. <laughs> sometimes the problem is not getting it at all. <laughs> They're both problems. Sometimes the problem is wanting to get it, but not having the thing to get it with. <laughs> problems right there. Now, some of them I don't have because I'm married, because there it is. But because you're married, then other problems come in because sometimes kids are around. What are you going to do? Put on masks? Come on. <laughs> you just made me feel like you had all the answers. You had it all together. Well, that's because you're very rich and powerful, and I was trying to kiss up to you. <laughs> Tracy? No. Travel to Reigns Peru Continental, the only airline with service to every major ski resort in Colorado and throughout the Rockies. Continental, one airline can make a difference. Thank you. That's Richard's album there. And uh, Charlie, let me tell him where you'll be. You're at a place called the Treehouse in Westport, Connecticut this Friday and Saturday? Two nights, two shows, too much. <laughs> Michael, yes. whatever you want to do, man, take me home. Could you share your husband with other women? Meet some wives who do on the Montel Williams Show Wednesday at 4. Then at 8, a deadly creature is stalking swimmers in the bay, and it's up to Mitch to stop it, if he can. Baywatch here on Channel 13.